I wanted to give you a warning about data pre-processing because there are some things that are really easy to goof up that can really mess up what you're doing. Okay, so normalization should be done on the training set. And the normalization parameters from training should be used as on the validation and test sets. Okay, so here you've got your, your data divided into these three pieces, training and validation, right? You can do anything you want on those. You are not allowed to touch the test set, right? You're never allowed to touch the test set until testing time. So what that means is that you calculate on your training set the normalization parameters, and those normalization parameters are the ones that are used on the validation and test sets. Um, in particular, you must never normalize the test set using its own normalization parameters, because if you did, that's actually leakage that's carrying information from other predictions and other data in the test set to the predictions for a particular test point, which you should never, you should not not do. And then the the I guess the, the, the important point is here that you cannot use the same piece of code for normalization on training as on testing. It's so tempting to just use the same piece of code that says, okay, normalize. But no, you can't. You have to you only normalize on the training set and then you take the values of the normalization parameters and carry them over to uh, the test set. And similarly, you must never normalize the whole data set before splitting into training and test because again, that's leaking information from the test set into training, which you don't want to do. Okay, so similarly, if you eliminate variables, any choice of variables to eliminate must be done on the training set. And then you should eliminate those same variables on the validation and test sets. So uh, this, is, this is, you know, one kind of microcosm of mistakes that people make, um, you know, generally about data leakage. So you should really, really be careful about other forms of data leakage, particularly when you're dealing with time series data. Time series data causes real problems with data leakage. So let's say you're using some time period for training, okay, you're using some time period for training, and then you're gonna test on the later times. The problem is that um, often during uh, training, there's an unofficial report of the thing that you're trying to predict happens during testing. So for instance, with medical records, sometimes doctor's notes will say, okay, the patient has passed away, but then during the test time, that's when the official time of death is or something like that. So, you know, all, all the machine learning is doing at that point is just reading the doctor's notes, which is not what you want to be doing if you're predicting whether the patient's gonna die. Also, um, we ran into this problem a lot with police reports where we were trying to figure out which crimes, you know, whether a new crime that was, committed was connected to previous crimes that had been committed. And sometimes in the police records, the police officers would write, oh, I think this crime is connected to this, these other crimes. And so that's exactly what we were trying to predict. So we had to, we had to not look at the police notes to, so that we would eliminate data leakage. Anyway, I wanted to let you know about that, just give you these warnings to make sure that um, you didn't goof this up. All right, thank you.